Hello, my name is Calvin. Uh, uh, I am from Liang Zui Crane, Guan Zengong uh, Dragon and Lion Dance Sports Association here in San Francisco, California in the USA. Um, so previously before COVID, uh, previously before COVID, um, lion dancing um, was pretty much in full effect. Um, training was about three to five days a week, maybe three to five hours of training each time. Um, and then it leads up to uh, to the Lunar New Year right before COVID. Everything was going fine, had a good amount of performances. Everybody's having fun. We had got to finish the annual parade that we do. And yeah, then it led into COVID. Okay, so starting um, March 2020 was our the U.S. first uh, official government lockdown uh, for COVID. Um, and in March, in that first uh, government lockdown, uh, most of America was willing to cooperate um, and stay at home and whatnot because there was government benefit, a uh, little bit of government aid to support the people while they were you know, off work and stuff like that. Um, and then along with the social guideline that they created was that everybody had to be uh, six feet apart. Um, and then mask wearing was not um, officially required. It was not uh, noted that you have to wear a mask because um, people don't take laws as seriously as like that when you try to say that. Um, it's like taking away their own freedom and when, as they say in the US. So some people do not wear masks at all. Um, and that was your own choice. But then if you try to go to a business and a business requires you to wear a mask when you enter, then everybody has to respect that in order to get in um, and be served for, for their food because uh, restaurants have their right to refuse service. Um, and so moving forward from March, 2020, first lockdown, um, we go about two months uh, later. That's when uh, we see the notice in, um, I guess, COVID uh, cases drop. Um, and from there, um, we opened up just a little bit where we allowed um, restaurants to do uh, to go orders, um, stuff like that, um, just to open a little bit of business, but not everything was open, just um, restaurants and uh, essential workers were like uh, healthcare. Um, moving forward about half a year into COVID, um, uh, I guess all that stuff, uh, half a year later. We get into September, around August, September, we had our uh, second lockdown. Second lockdown, um, right around August and September for another month or two. Um, and because of the first lockdown, people were already kind of getting used to the way life was uh, being secured like that. Um, so people were pretty respectful of it, already understanding that first wave was going to happen, second wave was going to happen. Um, and now moving forward, here we are um, in 2021, uh, where things are starting to slowly, very slowly, but surely open up a little bit more. Uh, now we have 25% capacity indoor dining here in California, at least. I don't know. Uh, Texas has um, pretty much opened fully 100%, no mask required and everything. Um, but yeah, here in California, we take it still a little bit more seriously because we were the, one of the biggest states to contract a lot of the COVID cases. Okay, and so continuing with how um, we were from the very beginning, um, without COVID, we were doing great. So all of that was good, but then COVID hit. And so government did restrict us from doing a lot of performances in the very beginning because of the social distancing. Um, a lot of companies did not want to hire teams because of the social distancing um, needed to be done. Um, and so they offered us to do virtual shows. Um, this Lunar New Year, a lot of our teams uh, here in the US have uh, done a lot of like virtual shows, maybe live shows for our clients. Um, so that is one way that we've done to try and protect um, our team members and be able to supply um, line dance for the Lunar New Year. Um, now, aside from that, um, when we do a live audience show, um, we will also 
ask our members to see if they're comfortable with doing that live show first. If they are, then we also try to get them checked up, um, do COVID tests first, make sure that everybody is safe to meet with each other before we actually come and uh, meet with each other because we also want to make sure that everybody's safe to go back home to their family. Um, and so when they have um, all confirmed that and they get their uh, COVID tests, um, we can say, okay, we bring them here together. And then um, some of the performances that we do, they will also have a, a, rapid, uh, a rapid COVID test for us to each take before they allow us to do the performance. Um, now, other places that don't do the testing, we at least try to make sure that they've all done their part too. They also know that they also need to be tested before they even host an event like this. And once they're all done, they make sure we are tested and whatnot, and then they can actually have an organized uh, performance. And they try to social distance everything. Um, sometimes, you know, you get a little bit close, but uh, most of the time we try to make sure all everybody is safe or within social guidelines. Our plan for promoting uh, Lion and Dragon Dance for the twenty twenty one of for the year twenty twenty one. Um, since we weren't able to host our 2020 national competition, we hope that now that it's 2021, things are opening back up a little bit. We see a little bit uh, more progress progress being done. Um, we hope that we can get uh, that competition done maybe towards the end of the year. Uh, we should be looking into a national competition for the U.S. only um, involving um, as many states, um, uh, the teams from every state that we can. Um, traditional wise, we know that a lot of teams here in the US are more um, focused in being able to do traditional ground routines rather than the high pole routines. Um, so we know that if we can get everybody on board or uh, most teams that are able to fly or travel, once we can hopefully either they can get a vaccine or at least uh, be locally tested um before coming to participate uh we're looking at local teams being able to do traditional wise maybe 15 to 20 teams across the u.s to participate uh high pole we know is a little bit harder to find teams to participate because teams in the u.s uh do not have a lot of resources in being able to get a full set of uh, high pole jongs to practice on or even get the coaching um, to teach them to learn how to jump the, the high poles. So the high poles, we're expecting um, at least 10, um, if not less, uh, be able to participate in the high pole um, with the full international rules and everything. <laughs> 